from Los Angeles. It's the Tom Mikey Show. Oh, Lord. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Mikey. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Mikey Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not posted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. you got to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of the program. Here we are together again on the radio. And Clyde writes in. He says, hello, Tom. Several times I've heard you say that your girlfriend or wife's friends probably know all about you. I agreed with you. But I thought that my wife was different. During our relationship, my wife would constantly complain about her sisters and how they constantly talked about their mates. She always said that this was the wrong thing to do and that couples should keep their problems to themselves. I actually thought that she would never talk to me about her friends. Correction. I actually thought that she would never talk about me to her friends or family members. Well, I was wrong. This weekend, I said to her, I wish that I had your approval. No argument, no heated words, nothing. I said this because nothing that I do for her is good enough. Anyway, she did not really respond nor argue. However, like the bitch that she is, she decides to play the silent treatment. She avoids me and answers with short answers. I decided to ignore her. Terrifying problem, right? Can't understand normal thinking. Anyway, the next day I was doing some chores and I went to the bedroom and noticed that the door was closed. I opened it and there she was on the phone. I didn't think much about it since my daughter was asleep and maybe she was trying to be quiet. She went to the next room and later closed the door. Earlier, she had told me that she was on the phone with her sister. My curiosity started to brew and I listened through the door. I could hear her talking crap about me to the person on the phone. She was talking about all of our problems and my shortcomings. I became enraged and went into the room and told her to stop. She denied saying anything and kept talking. What a bitch. I confronted her later, and she then confessed but said that she needed to vent. What? Am I missing something here? I asked her why the F she needed to tell her sister about our problems. Of course, there was no answer, and then she started to put me down. I decided that it was not worth arguing. I questioned whether she was talking to her sister. I believe that she was talking to another guy. I can't prove it, but that is what I think, and I'm not a jealous guy. The only thing that keeps me in this stinking relationship is that we have children. And I love them more than words can express. They need a father figure, and I could not deal with another man around them. I don't know if things will last, but I can tell you that my trust for her has changed. I do love my wife, but I do not know if love is enough. It's Clyde. Now, I'm going to reiterate something I've said on this program before, and um, uh, I'm amazed that this stuff still goes on. The biggest problem people have in relationships is that, and it's mostly women who do this, there there are things men do, no doubt about it, but the uh, the fact is that um, many women, instead of coming to us, Tell us that we're insensitive, telling us that we forgot about something that was important, instead of telling us how to do foreplay, or to simply do foreplay, telling us what our shortcomings are. Many women just uh, pick up the phone and start dialing their friends and family and start telling them what our shortcomings are. Many times, her friends and family know more about our problems than we know. 
And I think that is the death of many relationships. I think a lot of people don't even realize that's what's killing. I have a hard and fast rule in any relationship I am in. And here it is, in case you don't know this. And exceptions are not tolerated. When there is a problem in any relationship I am in, it is discussed with me. If I ever find out that a friend knew about a problem before I knew about it, if I ever find out that a sister or a brother or a mother or a father or a gay friend or anybody else knew about it before I did, the relationship is over. Over. There's no two ways about it. I believe it is wrong to talk about the shortcomings of the person you're with, the one you supposedly love, with people who are not directly involved. How many times, ladies, have you been pregnant? You called up ten other people before you told the person who impregnated you. How many times have you not been able to have an orgasm? And everybody else knew about it. You've been faking for your boyfriend or your husband. But everybody else knew he was inept. Did you tell him what to do or how to do it? No, you hoped he would figure it out. Because so much about love for people is fate. It was meant to be, it was meant to be. If it's not meant to be, it's not meant to be. If he can't figure out where the old G-spot is, well, he's deficient and the uh, telephone lines are lighting up with calls uh, saying, what do I do about this to everybody except the one person who can fix it? I make it really clear. I don't tolerate it. I'm not a dictator. I'm not telling others what to do. I am simply saying, if you want to be in a relationship with somebody you can gossip about to your friends and family, leave me. Get out. Don't come back. You go hang out with your friends, drink Cosmos, and talk about how, how men are um, inadequate. Till the turkey necks kick in and you're 40 years old and you're living alone. Because I am not going to tolerate. And I 100% mean that. The minute I walk into a room and I see a group of women shut their mouths and look uh, guilty... Because they know intimate things about me that they think I won't find out they know. Or they think I'm too stupid to figure out. I'm out. Out. And I don't have to overhear it to know what's going on, believe me. Plenty of ways to find out. Many of the people that you talk to... Don't realize that you're trying to do it in secret. And eventually, they blurt something out that you thought was private. Believe me, the mother-in-law, the girlfriends, the gay friends, they didn't know that some particular element was a big secret. After a while of telling every element of the personal lives of you and your boyfriend, eventually you stop telling people which things are secret and which things are not. And one day, one of those people goes back to your boyfriend or your husband and happens to blurt out something that he had no idea anybody else knew. I would say, if you're a man and you know this is going on today, you should get up off the couch, drop the remote, and pack her bags and drop kick her right out the door. Tell her that obviously she has more intimate relationship with her friends and family than she does with you. Therefore, she doesn't need you paying the rent. All those other people can pay her rent for her. Do you think I'm being unreasonable about this? One, two, hundred, five, eight, hundred, Tom. Women want you to make more money than they make. It doesn't matter how much you make or they make. I don't make no money. I love when the guy is the deadbeat for a change. I really do. The Tom Likey Show. The Tom Like is Show at 1 800 800 Tom. He is our telephone number. Joe on the Tom Like is Show. Hello. Hey, T. How you doing, bro? Night, Joe. 
Hey, listen, we just want to let you know real quick that you're a freaking genius. And I think that uh, this is an issue that I'd, I'd love to hear you talk about today because it's something that needs to be said. Women don't give guys a chance to fix things or even hear what the heck the problem is. And then they, then they want to turn around and, like you said, dish it all out to everybody else. So, I, w- I wonder how many women out there who got pregnant, oh, either whether they wanted to have a baby or didn't, yeah. told the man who impregnated them first. Yeah. <laughs> or how about, how about the women that have have uh, minute issues that they turn into a huge issue with somebody else, and you can't even fix it by the time it gets to you. That's right. It's horrible. It's horrible, man. But I thank you for your time, and it's a wonderful, wonderful thing for you bringing up today, man. Thanks, bro. Thank you, Joe. one 800 800 tom is our telephone number. William on the top like his show. Hello. Oh, long time, first time. Thank you. Yeah, I had the same situation. I, had a, I was at work. I, I was dating a girl. I was at her house. She wanted to get busy. She had her two kids in the next room. And they were about eight or nine years old. And I told her, you know, I, this is not for me. I go to work the next day. My buddy comes up to me and goes, hey, man, I thought you had it on a silver platter. How come you didn't take it? And first thing, I walked into work in the morning. Mm-hmm. Everybody knew about it when I first got to work already. What do you think about that? Well, I dumped her the next day. Good for you. That was it. I told her, if you don't have respect for, you, for yourself, at least have respect for your kids. Well, my whole attitude is uh, anytime a chick uh, starts talking about me behind my back, and I find out about it, it's over that day. Yeah, I dumped it the next day. And I just want to make it clear that uh, you know, the, no warning is required. This is the warning right here. <laughs> Good job, Tom. Thanks for your time. William, thank you. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. This is Kevin on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. How are you doing there, Tom? All right, Kevin. I'm calling down. I'm calling all from here, Baltimore, Maryland. Uh huh. And it's a whole lot of that crap. What you saying is going on here. Mm hmm. And Lord knows, I'm a brother, and I can tell you, it's just horrible. Ugh. I, I done had to. I done had to kick so many girls to the curb just for that same thing because they can't stop running their mouth. Oh, I hate it. I hate it. And see, then you know, then they try to they try to throw it back on you, you know, in case like you said they run their mouth to a sister or a cousin or a friend, and then that friend is kind of interested, you know what I mean? It puts a whole number them. It puts a whole number. Uh, oh, that's a whole other problem. Absolutely, you know. Uh, how many women say, "Hey, my boyfriend banged me all night long. It's the best sex I ever had," and then uh, that chick is uh, trying to get uh, trying to get with uh, the boyfriend. Absolutely, and I, I didn't. I didn't came across, it and I'm like, oh, geez. I mean, it kind of got me caught up. Like, you know, should I go ahead and go for the for the easy friend, easy cousin? You know, even though she she put it out there like that, you know, it's her fault from the beginning. Mm-hmm. So whatever happens, happens. But uh, sometimes I try to, uh, you know, keep my keep my peace about it. Sometimes it all depends on how much she done pissed me off with the whole thing, or how much I just don't want to deal with her at all. So I just say to hell with her. And, Go ahead and do the hell what I want to do. Good for you. I'm proud of you, Kevin. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. Carlos, you're on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Carlos. How's everything going? Do you care, pal? Yes, sir, I do. I'm doing great. Tom, you know, you are so right. I had a girlfriend one time that was like that. She'd hang out with all her girlfriends, all 20 of them or whatever, and they would like, bah, 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 you know, talk and talk yeah. and talk. And eventually, uh, she would get to talk to me about everything else. I knew everything. Penis size, staying power on the other guys. I knew everything. And I knew the girls knew everything about me. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, it, it's a package deal. You know, a woman that would do that kind of nonsense, um, you know, they're indiscreet. They're drama queens, big-time attention whores. I, I'll, I'll go a step further, Carlos. These women are not married to you. They are married to their girlfriend. You are the replaceable part. You're the fan belt in their lives. That is correct. I was I was a distraction. That's all I was. Today. And 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 believe me, because they've seen them come and they've seen them go. That's correct. And the I friends was... are the ones who stay, and and you are the replaceable part. That's right. Uh, she had this boyfriend revolving door that I called it. You know. Mm-hmm. And uh, big big time pain. Yes, not worth it. And guys out there, you know, if you see this. Uh, it's just a little a little snapshot of who she really is, and it's a big package deal, and it's a, it's not worth it. Did you dump that bitch? I dumped her. Oh yeah, Good big time you. drama queen, big time crazy bitch. She was a lot of fun when she was drinking, but other than that, she's a big time drama queen. Damn. <laughs> yeah. Yikes. Carlos, thank you. I right, blow me up, Tom. Here you go. 
is 1-800-5800-TOM. Brian on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Brian. Hey, I've only been listening to your show for about four months. I just started on the radio, but you have already changed my life. Really? Uh, today, uh, I found out my girlfriend was been cheating on me, but uh -huh. I, I, couldn't have, I didn't have no proof. So I called her friend, and her friend helped me out. She called her on three-way, and I'm sitting there listening, and then she said all this incriminated her. Yeah, uh, yeah, I went with him this day, and I went with him that day, and yeah, and all this other stuff. And I was like, yep, I see how it is. Just hung up on her. Him meaning somebody other than you. Yes. So you had a, a female friend who knew her, and you made a three-way call. She made a three-way call with you on one line saying nothing. Yes. Probably with the mute button pressed or something. And, mm -hmm. and then uh, the other line was your uh, girlfriend. Yes. And your girlfriend told this other chick all about what she's been doing with some other guy. Yes, that's her best friend. Well, that's, uh, that's the best thing that could possibly happen. Why was the best friend helping you out? Did she want you? <laughs> she, she, she knows that I'm a good guy and I, you know, I cared for her. And I, I've had plenty of times to check her, but you know, I never did. I loved her, but I saw how it was, and she helped me out. Now she lost her best friend, and she lost the guy who treated her well. So uh -huh. her loss. And did you bang the best friend? No, not uh, yet. Oh, not yet. You're working on that, though, I hope. Cause yeah. I'm telling you, they, they, I guarantee you, one of her incentives for helping you is she wants you. Yeah, I, I don't know. We'll find out. Give it a shot. All right, thanks, Tom. Hi, right, Brian. Thank you. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Ernie on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hello there, Tom. How are you? All right, Ernie. Hey, listen, you are the man, and I just have to tell you that uh, um, I learned so much from you that uh, I'm just like a son. Okay? You're, you're the son I never had, Ernie. Th that's right. That's right. But anyway, I want to talk situation. I've got this girl in whom um, uh, we've been together for a while, and uh, um, lately, in the last month, she's been complaining to her girlfriend that I don't give her to her enough, but when I do give her to her, it's just like ecstasy, right? And so... But she doesn't realize that because she said that, I'm getting her, her girlfriends, and she's not getting as much as she used to get. Look at that. Hey, it's, it's, it's out of this world. So how many of her friends have you nailed now? Three. I love it. Hey, I love it, too. And guess what? It's, it's so good that when I see her tonight, I'm dumping her. <laughs> Tom, it, it, it's over, Tom. It is over. It, it's over. There's no need for me to have her when I can have all this fun out here right now. Absolutely. Well, that'll teach her to run her mouth. I'll tell you what. Hey, you know, I hope, she, I hope these other girls are... Goddamn mouthy broad. I hate that. Yeah. What is wrong with them? They, they're, they're stupid. Why Why ruin her a good thing? When... Because they sit around watching fatties like Star Jones on TV and all these other big mouth, windy broads who hey, Tom, love gossiping about stuff. You're the man, Tom. I just had to call you let you know that... Your son out here, out here by Lake City right now, um, is doing his thing. And anybody, anybody, especially those, those fat broads who try to, their best to put Tom down, then I'm saying, don't talk about my dad like that, and I'm going to kick off with their butt. Ernie, I am so proud to have you as a son. Thanks very much for the call. Thanks. This is the Tom Likas Show. From Los Angeles to 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Talking about um, primarily women. Uh, there are probably men who do it, too, but I would imagine it's mostly women. Who uh, talk about the guys they're with behind the guy's back, and then later on the guy finds out, like, the hard way. What do you think about that? It's 1-800-5800-866. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to, um, hmm. look at these calls. Scott on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? Hi, right, Scott. Well, good to hear it. Hey, uh, first of all, I'm a fairly new listener, and i got to say, uh, after my marriage ended, I spent a couple of years trying to figure out what in the hell. And as I listen to you, either I learn something or you validate what I realized. And uh, so my hat's off to you, my friend. Thank you. You bet. Um, geez, I found out after 13 years that everything, absolutely everything, went to her sister, her family, her friends. And when when she ended up saying she wanted to separate, 
she was telling me that she had told me, and then later through the process I find out, well, she was just kind of confused. She had told so many people, she assumed she told me. Holy cow, that's extreme. Yeah. I, I was, you know, because when somebody comes to you and says, you know, I get separated and we got kids and the whole thing, you're kind of devastated. And, and I'm like, well, geez, you know, can't we talk about it? I, I didn't even know all of this stuff. And so, oh, I, we talked. You, you wouldn't, you didn't communicate well. Well, in the end, I, you can't communicate if it's only one way. Now, if you're telling everybody else about it, there's no communication. The, the communication yeah. is, does not exist. Okay. That's why you have to fight the, the, the you have to, the, the, the good, the, the best defense, a good offense. That's exactly if, right. If you find out she's telling other people, it's time to go. Two words. Check, please. And, yeah, and the thing is, to be fair, you tell her, you let her know that if this happens, you're out and you're not kidding and there's no second chances done. Yeah. Then you do it. This is, you know, women want to talk about men can't be intimate. Well, man, it's hard to be intimate when you're sharing everything with everybody. Yeah. You know, that, that ruined the intimacy and trust for me right there. So, um you know, that was pretty much two-thirds, three-fourths of why I was ready to move on. I completely understand. I thank you. Audra on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi, Audra. Um, men gossip as much as women do. No, I don't think they gossip as much. I do believe there are men who do. But I think um, men generally, it's not because men are better people. Uh-huh. It's not because men communicate better. In fact, it's the exact opposite. Um, okay. I, gen- I generally... I know you're going to tell me about one man, and therefore you believe all men are the same. Uh, but what I'm telling you is that um, it's not because men are better people. It's because men don't like talking about those little details, generally. Oh, my, my husband does. He talks about everything. Again, about. you're not hearing. Your husband may be the exception to the rule. Okay. But generally speaking, uh, when a man goes on a date... Uh-huh. All the other guys want to know is, did you get any? Exactly. That's it. They don't want to know the details or what she looked like naked or whether you kissed first. <laughs> men don't want to know any of that stuff, and men don't tell. Exactly. Are there exceptions to the rule? I'm sure your husband is one of them. But... Yeah, but we also have to tell our, our girls, our girlfriends, you know, hey, what's going on? Because sometimes our, our no, you don't. men don't, don't, they don't want to listen, you know what I mean? Well, uh, then, you know what? If the man isn't listening, you married the wrong man. Probably, probably. And so telling your friends is a Band-Aid on a major problem. Okay. You, you got a point there. So okay. if you have a man you can't talk to, it's time to go. Okay. You got a point there. But men gossip as much as women do. Well, then you know what? You have the option of taking my advice and walking. Okay. That'll be good. So gonna, are you going to do husband? it? Yeah. When I divorce my husband, I'll go tell you thank you. Absolutely. All right. I'll give you a good crack in the ass to, as a congratulations. That'll be good. All right, Audrey. All right, bye-bye. Thank you. Here to help. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. This is Rachel on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you? All right, Rachel. Um, I was just calling. Um, I, I really, I totally agree with you. I think that, you know, a lot of men callers have been calling in, but um, I do think that women gossip about relationships and I I think it's really childish and um, I mean I understand from the last caller that you know some men do that too but I don't think it's anywhere near as much mm-hmm. and um, I mean I did I dated someone who was like that and I you know there's so much less drama in my life now that you know like that's over with but um, yeah I totally agree with you and I think that um, if you're in a relationship where, you know, you love a person and they love you back, I think that talking to them about it would be more beneficial than talking to anyone else because, I mean, you two are the ones that are in the relationship. So who would know better, you know? Well, and you're not going to solve the problem by talking to people who have their own lives. Right. And, you know, I think that if if you guys really, you know, want to be together and make things work, I think both of you would be more than happy to sit down and talk about your relationship or, you know, anything like that. So that's just my opinion. All right, Rachel. Okay, thanks. Thank you for the call. Music's Tom Like It Show. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Samantha on the Tom Like It Show. Hello. Hello. Is that a question or a statement? That would be a statement. Ah, hello. <laughs> How are you? Good. 
Um, I had uh, I agree with what you're saying in regards that we shouldn't talk to other people right. about your intimacy and what you have with your partner. Yes. But on the other hand, you've also always said that men don't listen. Men to sit there and nod and say, yes, honey, yes, dear. Well, actually, it, mostly I'm talking about, now, there are men in, who are married but, uh, who do that. But I'm primarily talking about the guys who are just trying to get laid or on a date. But it's the same thing if you're on no, a No, no, it's not. It's not. When you're dating, when a man is dating, he sees you as nothing more than a sperm depository. And what you are saying is irrelevant. The first date is just a formality. It's the price of admission for a man. And uh, we don't hear a word you say on a first date. You think we do because we go, uh-huh, isn't that interesting? Really? Uh, but, but the reality is that until we've had sex with you, we don't hear a word you say. Well, there's a lot of men that take that into the next step, such as marriage and all well, of that. Why would you marry somebody like that? Well, you see, see if you, if, I, I want to tell you something. If you're at the point where you have to tell your girlfriend what's going on because he's not listening, it's time to go. But Why would you stay with somebody like that? Well, I wouldn't, but there's only so That many is a men. sign that your relationship is dead. There's, there's only so many men out there that actually listen to well, what happens. Well, so, so what? So you're telling me then that uh, the man you're with, you've settled for him? No, I'm just saying that there's only... Are, a, do, you have a, do you have a husband or a boyfriend? Uh, no, I don't. I see, and that's because there's a shortage of men who will listen to you? Partly. What's the other reason? I just haven't found anybody I'm willing to spend time with. Dear, you're 27. Yeah. You realize that uh, the longer you wait, the more time uh, continues to tick. The less likely that. it is you're going to get somebody decent. I hear that from you all the time. The less <laughs> money a man is going to make, the less uh, successful he's going to be, the more uh, crow's feet and other wrinkles are going to sit in. The more your value goes down. Yes. You, do you understand that? Yes. Do you I hear that? Do you hear that. that clock? Like you said, I don't want to settle. But do you hear that clock to... ticking? There? I hear it, but like you said, I don't want to settle. I don't want to stick with a man who's not going to listen to me, and I don't want to settle for him just because my time clock is ticking. Yes. So you realize you could end up the cat lady living alone. <laughs> Our wacky Aunt Samantha, who comes over to hang out with her nieces and nephews because she can't have any of her own. Oh, that's the reason I hate you, and that's the reason I love you. I know, Samantha. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Leslie on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you? Great. Um, okay, I'm, my situation is um, I have a boyfriend, and... Um, I don't really have any friends I talk to, so I try and talk to him about everything, and I get told to shut up or what I have to say is not important. I see. And you stay with this person. Why? Um, I'm trying to figure that out. All right. Well, uh, why don't you just leave now? Um, I will, because I'm not in the... Um, because you have the radio turned up. That's one no, reason. No, no, no. I can hear it in the background. It's outside. Dear, I hear it, and you're listening to it. That's why there's these long silences. No, it's all kinds of things. No, but um, the he um, why would I leave now? Because um, in my situation right now, I don't have anywhere to go if I don't if I leave. There, do you have a job? I just got, yeah, I just recently got a job. Dear, you're 41 years old. Right. And why have you been unemployed? Excuse me. Why have you been unemployed? Um, various reasons. Like. Um, Incompetent? No. Uh, unintelligent? I have a very good job. I work for a tax consultant. Well, you just got this job. Right. You were unemployed before that. Right. Why? I was... Um... You have a criminal record? Yes. What did you do? <laughs> um, a long time ago, I wrote bad checks on my own account. That's great. Okay. So you have other problems in your life, too. Right. Uh-huh. Well, you have a job now, so why can't you leave this guy? I'm working on that. But then he, he, he um, I had a place, to, actually I had a place to go, to somebody to stay with, and... Here, you have a job. It's called get an apartment. I'm working, that's what I'm trying to do. How hard is it? I'll find you an apartment right now. You want an apartment? Yeah, I got an afford, sure. What, how much can you afford? Not that much, that's why I'm trying to find a room to rent. Dear, you're 41. Yeah. 
You're a loser. But he's, okay, do you come to come with him? You're a loser because if you're 41 and you have a job and you can't afford to find an apartment, by 41, you, you pissed away your life. Not I mean, I have money back. I, get, I have, I have a lot of money, but I, right now I'm in the process of getting into it. What does that mean? Um, my brother is in charge of the money, and he's. And it's a court thing I have to go through. I'm taking that he's. That how he's, he how much can you afford in rent? Me, um, eight, about seven hundred a month. Get a roommate. I'm looking. I have to. Look. There, there's a website. Forty nine dollars. You get on there. RoommateFinders.com. Go there, get a roommate, and move out. Okay. But you but you won't do it. Huh? You won't do it because you're a loser. No, I will do it. When? Hopefully by the weekend. You won't. Yes, I will. I've oh. already been looking. I have a place actually I might be taking. But then he accuses me of... Um... Who cares what he accuses you of? You're leaving. Okay. Who cares? That's right. Oh what? I know, there's, I know there's something better out there for me. I doubt it, but uh, you know what? Just getting out of there will be better. Yes. But I don't think you'll do it. I will. By the way, Dean told me that uh, he's listening right now. Yeah, he is. He's outside. Well, <laughs> does he know you're leaving? Or did you just I find out by listening to the radio? I tried to leave. I had a place to leave. What do you mean you to tried to leave? He achieved it. No, you won't let me take my stuff with me. What? Well, he, he, he told me if I try to get my stuff out of here, he's not going to let me take it. And... Hey, you, 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 right, I got I got three digits for you, dear. Nine one one. Yes, yes. We live at home with his mother. He's forty four and lives at home with his mom. Well, dear, you're not much better. Yes. You all you also live with his mom, so you're in no position to criticize. Right? Um. Yeah, but you're you're as big a loser as he is. You two are perfectly matched. Right? No. You're not? No. Well, at least he's living at his mom's house. You're so desperate, you have to live at his mom's no, house. I had my own place. He, and I went away because of my criminal record. And he, when I came back, he had moved my stuff into his house. Uh, I see. Why hadn't the stuff been moved into your place if you had a place? I had a place because he didn't want to pay the rent while I was gone. Why, why, what does it have to do with him, dear? You're moving out on your own. Yeah, I had my own place. Dear. Then you should have gone there. But you didn't because you're a loser. Right? I've been with him for the last four years. Yeah, I screwed that up. I should have, I should have realized when I first got to You're still there and you're a loser. You're a loser right now. Aren't you? I'm stupid. I know I, that. I agree with that. Huh? I, I guess you're stupid and a loser. I don't understand. I'm not going to say I'm a loser. You're 41 and you're living in somebody else's mommy's house. Loser. Stupid for, stay, for putting up with his putting to him. Dear, you're still doing it. And. No, I'm not. You're doing it right now. You know what? I That's where you up. live right now. You're going home to Mommy's house tonight. Um, Aren't you? No, I've already told him I was going to. I, I'm ready to go get a motel room and pay for a weekly if I have to. Go. Well, I, I don't see you doing it. You don't see me doing it? No. Okay. Kid, once I get into. Uh, I'll go do it. I'm, I'm ready to go do it. I don't see him. When? Tomorrow, tomorrow. Tomorrow. So tonight you're going to his mommy's house no, again. No, Where are you going tonight? I'm um, two friends. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's your friend's name? Sharon. Are you going right now? Um, I'm going to see, go to a friend's right now to get a car to go. Yeah. And, and, and then where are you going? Um, to the harbor. You are not. Yes, I am. You're a liar. I'm on my way there. I said I'm supposed to be there right now. I've been waiting on the I don't believe you. I do believe you're a loser. Tom, Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. All you women up there that are listening to the show, stop giving Tom a hard time. This man is telling you guys the truth. It's the Tom Likas Show. Dan on 
the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. That was the funniest thing ever. That moron that you just had calling her a loser for 20 minutes was the best thing I ever heard. Well, she is a loser. 